Welcome back to Other Words for Whore, you guys. Uh, happy Wednesday, whores. Uh, today, uh, well, you know, I'm Mila, the host. And today we are with, um, you guys, we're just going to go around the table and introduce ourselves. Um, but poor, poor Kira, we're waiting for her mic to be turned on. <laughs> so we'll, <laughs> but we'll start with Andy. Okay. <laughs> cool. Uh, hey, y'all, I'm Andy. I organize with SWAT Minneapolis. That's the sex workers outreach project. And we're going to talk about strippers rights today. Yeah. Yeah. You might not think we have any, but we have like a couple. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I'm Valentina. I um, am here with SWAT today. I wear multiple hats. Um, and I think we're going to talk about the police too, right? Like Absolutely. Fuck, fuck the police. Yeah, yeah fuck the fuck twelve. <laughs> yeah. First of all, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, because um, they don't be knowing what the fuck they're talking about, but they really act like they do. So we have like a little slideshow and everything. So should we get started? Except I really would like to get Kira, Except Kira. Up <laughs> to a mic. What is going on here? I. Kira, are you hooked on? Hello. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I I also have no idea what Gabe's saying, but um, anyways. <laughs> he is hooked up. She has been. I just didn't. It wasn't on. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oops. Okay. My okay. Bad. So, and we have Kira here, who's been on here before, but um, you can uh, introduce yourself. I'm Kira. I'm newer to SWAP and I do outreach and I've been a dancer for four years and I'm here to talk about workers' rights today. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Okay, so where should we start anyways? That's a great question. Um, Should we just start at the beginning? There we go. Uh, You can start. Cool. (laughs) Let's start at the beginning with this second part, the history of our criminalization. Um, Basically, there was a time um, where we weren't super criminalized in this country. The criminalization of sex work has not always existed. Right. But, right. But, like, in Minneapolis in particular... um, There was, like, a whole... Wasn't there, like, a whole section? Yeah, basically. Mm -hmm. So there's all these dudes coming here, working in the mills, (laughs) making tons of money, and, like, you know, dudes not knowing what to do with anything. So then the second wave of people that comes are the whores, and they help the men know what to do with their money. (laughs) (laughs) Spend it on some pussy. Yeah, and, like, build nice things and, like, have nice stuff. And, like, we've always been instrumental in the development of Minneapolis and in the economy. But then it was really when particularly, like, black sex workers and madams started really, like, making serious money that the city started taxing us of course right bastards. <laughs> and overtaxing us and like the cops started targeting us and that's when our criminalization here started um in many in minneapolis or in minnesota yeah totally okay yeah and it's you know i think have any of y'all or any of your friends ever gone to live it liveston like the oil mines in North Dakota. Oh, oh, Williston? Williston. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, Williston and Dickinson, actually, yeah. Well, no, not Dickinson, but yeah, Williston for sure. Actually, yeah, I worked there. Did you? Yeah, um, what, there was like two, there was like two clubs and they were like next to each other. And it was like wild out there. Yeah, it was like the wild, wild west because... I think that they just like those strip clubs like po- just like popped up when the totally when the when the oil companies popped up right just like kind of spontaneously and it just somebody got I, stabbed next door when I was there actually <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> all the stories are from the place are har- harrowing but like it just reminded me so much of that when I was reading the history of what happened in Minneapolis it's like oh we lived that like that was was it called Williston. Yeah. yeah There's a lot like Damn. Williston. Does it, does anybody remember Williston? <laughs> Yo, like people were getting people were getting like like diamonds like gifted to them like on stage <laughs> and shit. But then by the time I went there, of course it was too late. It was like kind of just like I don't know, it was crazy, but I did meet I met I did meet a hot guy out there though. 
You have an optimism. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm shaking my head because, like, <laughs> dumbass bitch. Like, I, I was, like, a brand new stripper, and he actually promised me, like, a brand new car. He was like, yeah, you want this new Cadillac? And I was like, oh, my God, it's going to buy me a car. No. <laughs> Dare to dream, though, you know? Yeah, okay. Fucking when it's too oh, good to be true, it probably can is. Can we put it to the second slide? Yeah, next, next slide, please. Next. Our history of... Ca- criminalization there we go um yeah so then it's fucking school time it is it's cool i love love this shit i like that you guys indulge me in this i love (laughs) it dude yeah Uh, Uh, yeah so strip clubs who knows when they started you know from the old burlesque clubs in the 20s but in the 80s is when lap dances started So it's when it moved from being on the stage to having like that more contact with customers. And that's when, yeah, so that's when strip clubs in particular were criminalized. Before that, it kind of held that like safe space. And there is a history forever and ever of strip clubs getting raided. And like, especially, you know, during any times of prohibition and stuff like that, of course, there's going to be liquor at the strip club. (laughs) We've always been targets for our lewd and lascivious behaviors. Yes, lewd and lascivious. (laughs) We were saying earlier, that's like, sounds so sexy. (laughs) <laughs> like when the law against you was like a compliment. Yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> I was criminally sexy. I was lascivious. <laughs> um, yeah, that's it says the first uh it says the first like kind of strip club ever was called the Condor Club. And th- it wasn't really a strip club. They broke sexual boundaries in 1964 when they like turned it into a topless bar. <gasps> So it's like another threshold is when nipples arrived on the scene. Yeah. Very important. Can't be having those women nipples out here. I hate the clubs that don't let you show your nipples. Like in Florida, it was the weirdest thing ever. You weren't allowed to show nipples, but they were allowed to touch, which is so (laughs) interesting. No, because they find fucking loopholes. Yeah. Like there's always a loophole because I know there's places where like as long as there's like some sort of film. Nail polish. Yeah. Nail polish even counts. just be like, no, there's something on there. There's like a... Uh, bikini clubs in LA where you don't you're not allowed to take anything off and the work around there a lot of times girls wear like baggy bikinis so just like your boobs just come oh out when you, my like, god lean over and oh stuff. that's so smart <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah there's always a, there's always where there's a will there's a way no for real that's hilarious <laughs> yeah okay. but the lewd and lascivious laws used to be the only things that applied to mm-hmm. strip clubs legally um and as we said there's tons of different interpretations of this law uh one of the things that breaks that law and the actual law is called disorderly conduct um, we call it lewd and lascivious because that's okay. like one of the things you can get written up for. Um, but yeah, it could be anything like grabbing your own boobs, simulating a sex act, like anything. All th- like <laughs> I would be There's immediately arrested. Right. That they can just take doing for as many things as whatever they want. Yeah. And if if they failed to catch you on anything bigger, they can be like, oh, I definitely saw someone grab her boobs. <laughs> Um, it's not used very often. It hasn't been used very often in the past in Minneapolis in particular either um, that I know about. And I am an elder stripper, 20 years. <laughs> I love that. An elder. Respect. <laughs> so yeah, that's that. And then should we move on to the adult entertainment ordinance? Oh, yeah, sure. Let's keep it going. Yeah. Um, well, in 2019, I remember this. It was a big thing. Oh, it was a huge. Yeah, you had me on a couple of times for it. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. We, um, yeah. Wow. No, I'm just like, damn, 2019. I started dancing like so fucking long ago. Okay. Anyways. No, that's important. It feels Did like a long time. Seven years? Uh, 11. 11. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I'm 31. That's important. Decades are important. The kids are important, dude. <laughs> I'm grown in this bitch. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so now, like, we have this adult entertainment ordinance. We, wrote, we helped the city write it in 2019. Um, oh, shit. So now there's more that the city can do rather than just enforcing the lewd and lascivious laws. Now they can enforce labor standards. And it's a huge win, and it's taken way longer to implement than it took to write and it took a really long time to write it too <laughs> the ordinance yeah we worked on it for like a couple of years and then mm. it's been a few years of trying to implement it in the city and then of course like rona ruined everything 
like it does for everything. <laughs> you know when the clubs opened back up, though, I was making a fuck ton of money. Really? Mother- oh, yeah. The motherfuckers couldn't wait to see some think- titties. I haven't seen money like that since then. Like An old man was like, <laughs> he was like, I got vaccinated. I couldn't wait to get out. That's the first thing he did was come to the strip club. That shit's fucking wild. He gave zero fucks. He said, I'm ready. Anyways. <laughs> oh, my God. I love that. Um, okay. So what about, so yeah, every, a lot of people had uh, some problems with the ordinance as far as like uh, the VIP rooms and stuff. But other than that. Um, it was definitely meant for like, um, like, so owners don't be taking advantage of the dancers, right? Right. That's the intention. And like, especially like, uh, the health department was the part of the city that really wanted to help. And it was like, actually, there's a lot y'all could do for us. Yeah. Like our locker room. Well, I mean, like in some clubs, like our locker rooms are not legit. Like our areas are not clean. They're not safe enough, you know? So it was really like inviting in those structures that can like help yeah um yeah it's super intentionally written to like diminish the role of police in our lives and like that's like explicitly stated in a few different ways and yeah, I love that. yeah and like the vip thing too you know we've talked about it like it was where we could push the health department back to at the time because at the time they the health department thought like all vip spaces were like a public health crisis they were like they didn't want them at all at all and so this was your guys's way to like uh make shit even or some shit yeah yeah make some compromise yeah like, yeah, yeah yeah make everyone feel good about it and they were just it it's it's like the stigma shit, right? Like they were just so uncomfortable with the idea, and because know. of their, I just, and I feel like that's like a bias, huge to 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 sex work in general. Like, damn, relax, huge bias. Yeah, like it, the fuck. It's a it's like an ironic thing because like if we're treated as a public health crisis, it's right? Like pretty fucked up. But then on the flip side, it's also like the only time people fucking care about us. <laughs> <sighs> fucking ridiculous dude i could go i could go on a whole tangent um absolutely <laughs> i was gonna say i'm like i don't know how much of the specific minneapolis only content we want to get into yeah i mean i don't know like we can like you usa wide these fucking a lot of a lot of people got a lot of people fucked up <laughs> very true right? like i hear like so many horror stories and that's why i always say i'm like uh it's like a privilege to work in a club where like they actually like give a fuck about you and don't treat you like a fucking dumb bitch. And that's the thing, like it shouldn't be a privilege. Right? Exactly. Like, that's it, yeah, it like it needs to be a given. Exactly. Like that should be like a fucking like a right, which is why like we always want like fucking like labor rights and shit and like decriminalization because Right. What the and, fuck? And like speaking from our like, you know, experience too, like we've seen changes in the industry and we've seen things like both be really adaptable in a positive way. Yeah. And like at the same time, you know, when I started dancing, it would have been ludicrous to think of giving the club anything more than like twenty dollars and some tip out at the end of the night. When you started? When I started. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. My state Oh, so it's like gone up. Oh my God. It's gone up wild. Oh, whoa. Like, I didn't know that. Yeah. And in 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 the ways we talk about this all the time. Like stripper math is like crazy making. Like don't ask a stripper like how the money works with the club because yeah, yeah. you're gonna get a dissertation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> it makes no sense. But like yeah, like it was like a stage fee and then it was like whatever tipping out you wanted to do. Right. So like DJ, whoever helped you, that's about it, you know, and then to watch it go to like what the fees are like now and how they charge us money at every turn. Dude, I was thinking about like some of these clubs charging like fucking like nine dances and make like making you clean that shit. That's just crazy. I was just sitting and thinking about it the other day. I was like, ain't no fucking way I'm working anywhere where I got to pay damn near two hundred dollars. Like, fuck what? Right. I don't even know why you charge like why charge the dancers that like like or like at King of Diamonds it was like at least a hundred dollars for every shift but you had to pre pay no dude <laughs> you had to KOD pre-pay. man <laughs> hey, you gotta pre fucking pay because they don't fucking trust their dancers 
And then they will... It's very corporate feeling, and I don't like... I fucking hate it. Dude. And they'll so rob us they like that. Like, they will not hesitate yeah. to just take money straight so out of our... a shitty night, you can't even go the next day. Mm-hmm. Or they're trying to make some money back. Or they'll do you uh-huh. the favor of letting you owe them money. Like, yeah. so gracious. Oh, thank you. It was, you. You saw the club. You saw your club. What are you fucking talking about? And um, this fucking wage theft. I heard, like, I heard this guy came in this this club around here. We're on these parts. And um, he spent, like, 22K. Like, each girl technically made, like, $4,000. And they, like, walked out with, like, 2K. And I'm like... How? Why? <laughs> like, is this even legal to be taking 50% of... Of our money. It's not legal for them to take any of our money. Yeah. All see, and, and exact. And so I don't think like nobody fucking knows that. Like, I, like they, they know, they pray and they know on the fact that a, you're not going to do anything or say anything because you don't want to lose your job. You don't want to get blacklisted. I think that's and like, you will. yeah. And I think that's like <laughs> one of the most fucked up parts is that like, you're going to make me fucking take half of what the fuck I earned when this person spent so much fucking money. And That's that, just crazy to and me. And that person spent that money to be with you. Yeah, to right. Be with those girls. Nobody is paying money to hang out with a dude in a cheap suit. Like, no, not- like what? <laughs> <laughs> it's not the draw that's not the appeal at, at fucking all I wish people would have like more respect for the people who fucking make their fucking business to begin with like all of these businesses like even when OnlyFans remember when OnlyFans tried to like kick us off and we we're like excuse me in- <laughs> we literally fucking made you the fuck are you talking about? The whole existence of the platform. Yeah, and then they were like, story. "Oh, never mind." Yeah, <laughs> never mind. This is about celebrities. <laughs> yeah, and but and then they still they still have like some stupid ass fucking shit. But um, but on the wage theft tip, and this is like the next slide too. But um, the main thing for that is with the adult entertainment ordinance, it's now illegal for managers to accept tips from dancers, um, which of course we know they still are. Yeah, <laughs> like that's gonna take a ton of like culture to change around. It is that. such yeah, it's such a culture because I know I totally know like a lot of dancers that are like, it's like so fifty fifty. But I think it also depends where you work because some of these places that some of the stories I've heard are real fucked up, like retaliation and like standing there and like giving you like giving you shit for making you feel like uncomfortable for not tipping fucking. F- firing you knowing that it was like a slow night like fuck you the bad shift yeah right Right. yeah and like that's a thing too right like there are some clubs that are really good about stuff like that there are some managers Mm -hmm. that are really chill to some people you know and it's like because we don't have like a strong contract or anything that makes any sense we can't like standardize that stuff because you really your job shouldn't be dependent on if certain people like you or not <laughs> right yeah for you sure know? oh there's always favoritism in the clubs for sure and this my, is like not, oh go ahead one of my biggest fears when i start a new club is um under or over tipping managers and like i'll try to like ask the anxiety other, yeah like i'll Dude, try to yeah. ask other girls i'll be like hey so like what's standard for tipping the dj here mm-hmm. and even other girls don't really want to answer that they'll give you a very like well i'll tip who helped me and i'm like girl yeah but like but for real give me a money like what's the amount yeah and yeah. people people don't even want to talk about it so it's really uncomfortable. Yeah. And you don't want to over tip because then they'll always expect that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> I found out that I was over tipping oh, by a lot. Oh, my gosh, dude. One and- of my one of my friends fucking is like, <laughs> she always over tips because she feels bad. And I'm talking like big tips. And I'm like, stop doing that. <laughs> like, and, like, she needs that money. Yeah. Like, that's legit her money. It's It shouldn't be. I don't really think it should be up to us to like pay other people's wages when we're fucking working solely on tips right right and like like it's just not fair that's all we get is tips Uh uh-huh yeah like i don't have a fucking base pay (laughs) right like why do they need a portion of what yeah to to be entitled and expect it and like retaliate against me if i don't tip out to what your liking is is fucking insane and it's just, yeah, it's really sad how many places, like, just fully take advantage of um, of their dancers, like, fucking, like, nationwide, you know? I'm not even talking, like, eh, anywhere specifically, but, like, even, you know, on sex work Twitter, like, just the most craziest fucked up stories. And 
I mean, obviously, I don't know if just like everybody organized or something, maybe like someday, like these, all these places could be tackled down. I believe. And I think like, cause there's like some good, um, like, I don't know if I can like strippers unions or whatever groups of people out there that are like trying to organize in like some cities and shit on some of these podcasts that I've listened to. So, um, Yeah. I don't know. There's hope, I guess. <laughs> I think so. And I think it's really like about setting that standard. Mm-hmm. It really like it, like you said, it has to be organized. It has to be like a collective decision because yeah, yeah. if one person or a small group of people says like, we're not going to do this anymore, they're just going to get fired and blacklisted. Yeah. And it would be, like me. yeah. Yeah. And it would be so <laughs> nice if it was like, everybody was on the same page, like including like management, including like the waitresses, like, because honestly, like I want all of us to eat. You know, right. I want all of us to make fucking hella bread. Like, you know, and we, and we I can. want the yeah. amount of money that comes to this club. Everybody can live well. We yeah. just have to like be intentional about how we do it. Absolutely. I mean, there was intention put to like divide folks too, right? Like you got to think of it even for the people right now are like, oh, I want to be an independent contractor. And then some folks being like, I want to be an employee. Right? Yeah, so, like, those divisions aren't by accident. They're they're put there intentional too. And so, how do we look at it to bring everybody to that point and bring them to the same page? You know, um, because like you're right, if we do organize, and it's going to take folks like that. Um, but I think it's also recognizing like, hey, this isn't by accident that we're sitting here fighting with each other. Um, and yeah, fighting who our real target and like focus should be on. Yeah. Right. And as much as like they need to appreciate that we're the draw, like, you know, we talk about this a lot of times. You're like, I want really like awesome support staff. I want really like great yeah. co workers at the club. Like you said, I want them to fucking thrive right. too. Yeah. And you say, and you say it's like made to divide like intentionally. Um, can you say like why, why that is or why? I mean, because it, it keeps us off of our focus, really. And like, um, I don't know if you, you got even in restaurants, right? Like front of the house and the back of the house, like who gets tips and who doesn't get tips. But, right. um, and so they, because they're so separated, they're like, oh, well, this is our problem. And it keeps you like, oh, well, if the back of the house did this or the back of the house isn't working hard enough or they don't deserve to, they're not doing as much fighting with oh, each yeah. other, you know, and it's the same thing inside of the clubs as to like, oh, well, we don't want, or we want to be independent contractors or we want to be, you know, looked at as employees. You just name some of the things that we're going without already. Like, mm-hmm. you know, we don't have medical insurance we don't have any of those things and like those are things that we all could come together on as to like hey regardless if you're an independent contractor or if you are want to be an employee like don't you want to be safe at work right you know don't you want to be respected don't you want to like um make sure that you have an equal opportunity to work shifts and not have to play favoritism um as to like you know or tip out more just to make sure you get on the schedule and yeah case maybe no or brought to tables and shit yeah Yeah. yep <laughs> what is that? Oh, I said move closer to them. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. No, no, that, that I mean that's like super real. That's like you yeah. put it into such good words. I'm like, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um next. What's next? I don't know. Let's skip this. Let's skip ins- inspection. Oh, I like for Kira's now, little too. box. um oh we haven't i have never been in a raid before did you say you've been in a raid but like not here though yeah i was in a portland or some shit i know yeah yeah, yeah. damn but out here i was fucked up um i hear about raids in new orleans all the fucking time they like Um, they will do like targeted houston too yeah they'll do like targeted raids in new orleans that's fucked up and, you know, I appreciate you say, like, we're economic indicators. Like, man, strippers say the most psychic things sometimes. When I was down in New Orleans and, like, they were, like, systematically raiding all the clubs on Bourbon Street. Um, what the fuck? Yeah, it was, like, it was violent. It was a lot. It was awful. Um, and I was, like, there on a work trip, too. So I was working. And, like, if you're out of state, you're a flight risk. So I could have been stuck in a louisiana jail until my court date oh my (laughs) god it was one of the most terrifying work experiences i've ever had and i love new orleans but um that's fucked up i worked there once too when i was a baby stripper on bourbon street yeah what a time so fun i wonder what the club was even called it was like some shit was like outside too like they had like an outside like villa type shit the like back courtyard where you can smoke it was really interesting Mm -hmm. my friend bought like coke from the manager (laughs) It was crazy. <laughs> you can 
stand out on the front porch of the strip club too and holler at customers? Yeah, like, you, oh, I what? I took pictures with people what? like outside, so I'm in somebody's fucking like I don't know. You can secret charge people look. for like topless pictures on yeah. the street. It yeah. was crazy. It was like very much so like a culture shock because I felt like I was like in a different country. It was wild. Nice. Good it times. Is. It is wild. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, <laughs> the raids in New Orleans, they ended up it like it was like this targeted effort. About half the clubs on New Orleans on Bourbon Street ended up closing as a result of that like yeah. string of attacks. That was actually in 2019. <laughs> was wow, right what the, the fuck? Orleans. Yeah. And uh all the strippers at the time, everyone kept saying, Oh, they're trying to it's like the Disneyfication. They're trying to Disneyfy Bourbon Street, New Orleans, or whatever. Oh years, yeah. Years later it comes out, it's true. The Disney they, Cruise Lines added New Orleans as, like, their big port. And they are literally trying to clean up New Orleans, put in more family-friendly Stop attractions. making <laughs> shit that's not for children fucking for children, it's, dude. Bourbon stop. Street is not for children. <laughs> like, this is, like, okay, like, when I was in Thailand and, like, we're on this fucking road. Like, I fucking forgot what it's called, but it's a crazy road. You don't... Kids don't belong there. What are you doing? Or, like, when I'm in Vegas or something and then I see kids. Why did you bring your... Like, okay... But to Vegas. a fam a family trip to Vegas, <laughs> I guess there's shit to do. But I don't know. Just don't be don't be acting like oh don't be dumb when you see some shit that's not meant for kids because you're in a fucking place this is not really meant for kids. <laughs> Anyways, I could go on and on. Fucking idiots. You're back in Guam. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, somebody asked me this dumbass question the other day. They were like. um they're like, how are you like a role model to children if you're a sex worker? And I was wow. like, why the fuck would I be a role model to children, you idiot? What are you fucking talking about? <laughs> Not everything is for kids. Not everything is for kids. Like, and as far as sex work goes, don't fucking try to act like I'm talking about drag, okay? <laughs> Somebody asked me that the other day and I was like, what? I fucking love drag. Anyways. Drag is great. Yeah. Do you want to skip to the slide about raids? Will you go to raids? Raids. All right. Um, raids are still possible, though less likely. Yeah, he like said I've never heard. I've never heard of one around here, which doesn't mean that it didn't happen. But you know, we tend to gossip amongst each other pretty well. I mean, something like that, we would know. Yeah, like through the Great Stripper Vine for yeah. sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it's still a possibility. Um, and when there is a strip club raid. Um, it's totally possible for everyone to get a prostitution charge, even if like there was one act of prostitution that was caught in the club. Um, it's also very possible to get a disorderly house charge, which is the legal term for like a whorehouse. Okay. Or just like, yeah. Like, it's disorderly. There's dick sucking a lot. <laughs> or like a trap. It's like a trap house law. First of all, bring back brothels. Fuck off. For real. Um, Who does like, what? Want? It's just fucking stupid ass laws. Um, okay, so like, what even, what even uh, constitute? What would get you like a prostitution charge? Like, you have to be like in a sexual act, and then like just touching your titties or your pussy—that's like a disorderly. Yeah. Okay. So touching yourself would be a disorderly. Anything normal that we do all the time would be a disorderly. And then, um, unfortunately, you could get a prostitution charge. You don't even have to follow through with the full service sex act. You just have to agree to it. You have to agree to an act and a price. And that is what is technically breaking the law. So if somebody did, and you know, like as strippers, we do that. Like, oh, haha, yeah. But you Dude, don't yeah. mean it. Be making shit up. All, I be making shit up all the time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll come back with you to your hotel if you get VIP for two hours. Yeah. And if that's <laughs> wow. I never say that for legality reasons. I would have never done that. <laughs> yeah. No, see, like there's so many like little laws that like, uh, shit's just being broken at all times but you know there is that one book that you break like that you make like four felonies a day because laws are fucking stupid so that's true <laughs> <laughs> like okay fuck off but anyways and what? i think isn't it um any item of or like anything of good value um or oh, something right. of that sort too it that doesn't even necessarily just have to be money right oh okay so like can be like a Chanel bag or like a watch. Absolutely. It's so fucking stupid. Or your rent or whatever. Oh, right. So like yeah. people, because people will always be like, oh, like, but I didn't do it for like money. We said it's for, yeah, so anything. And then what else were we saying? Isn't it also, oh, was it you that said that even if you ask, or was I listening to a podcast, even yeah. if you ask if they're a cop, that um that is reason 
Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So that is like it can be used as evidence against you. And so there's like this idea of a law enforcement check and like tons of people have different ideas. We've all heard these things like yeah. oh, if you grab their dick or if you make them grab you or right. you make them expose themselves. Like yeah. there's all these different ideas mm-hmm. or or uh you you have to tell me if you're a cop. Yeah, yeah. None of these are true, you guys. <laughs> these, are, these are true. these are great myths. <laughs> and also keep in mind that any cop they they can do whatever a client would do. So they can fuck you. Yeah. And yeah. then arrest you. So when you're sucking their dick or getting fucked, just know that like that doesn't mean that you won't get arrested immediately after. They can give you or they can even like build up a case on you and keep coming back and like do shit like that, like weird shit like that. So that was one of the things that we saw in New Orleans. So the cops in New Orleans were setting girls up exactly that way, like sort of tailing them for a while, becoming one of their regulars, getting them to buy drugs for them, getting them to possibly do full service mm-hmm. with them, building yeah. up that like client trust rapport and then raiding the club. Yeah. And isn't this why MPD can't do it? To massage powers anymore because the cops were quote unquote having too much fun. <laughs> Correct. Disgusting <laughs> bastards. Disgusting. Gross. And because have- I just consider that sexual assault. That, that is that's absolutely sexual. To be so honest, I think it's a rape and a rob. Yeah, because mm-hmm. that the consent was based on what, and now you're taking that away. Right. So and uh, and you the one sitting in jail. <laughs> right. right right like <laughs> and there was like a particular massage parlor raid that got pretty egregious and the I love that word egregious sorry <laughs> The survivors sued the city and won this huge settlement so yeah now MPD is no longer allowed to raid massage it's parlors. fucked up fuck that guy yeah, and for, good yeah absolutely now now you guys can't raid fucking parlors how do you feel about that little bitches <laughs> And I guess I, I don't know if I, I th- guess I have to say, um, you know, we're not like telling anybody to like commit any crimes, but like, it would never, if you do just know these are the, th- the things. <laughs> educational purposes. <laughs> yeah. <only>. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. But like in the case of like a disorderly, you didn't actually do anything wrong. You were in yeah. the same building of, as a crime. Oh, and um, so I've been fucking listening to this podcast. I was talking about it on like my vent last weekend or last week when I was like all sick. But um, I guess I guess if you bring your charges to court, a lot of times they get thrown out. But sex workers rarely do it because they they just like chart like say they're guilty because um obviously they think they're not going to win because the justice system is set up against us obviously. But apparently, if you bring it to court, like. Nine times out of ten, it gets thrown out or, like, a hung jury. I don't even know what that means, though. Oh, totally. And, I mean, like, stuff like this is super hard to prove. Like, especially, yeah. like I said, like, a disorderly, like, if you're... So bring it to court. That's what I'm saying. If you worked an honest day, night of work and someone else did a crime and you went to jail, you have a pretty fucking good case in court. Like, yeah. And he, like, that's just logical. Right, right. Like, and tons of petty crimes get thrown out by courts. Like, there's a lot of stuff that, like, cops love to utilize to harass people. Yeah, they'll always make you feel like you're gonna, like, 100% percent like go to the fucking prison for forever or some shit totally and they don't and they don't really know what they're talking about like they don't know the law but they like pretend they do they only went to school for six months you guys they don't know anything they're idiots school had a case get thrown out because i saw the prosecutor and he told on himself and they found his number in my call records that's amazing oh my god i love that (laughs) yes see what like what are we doing here and was like do you know him? He says he knows you from a previous case. I'm like, I've never been to jail here before. And I'm like, if he knows me, I can tell you where he knows me from. <laughs> and yep. <laughs> oh my God. You see, like, and then has the nerve to be a prosecutor though? Yeah. <laughs> what the f- No, because, and this is like what I always say, like politicians and like men in these like judges, cops, honestly, they all, they have probably all seen a sex worker and Cops do a lot of raping and like coercing. A lot. A lot. A lot. (laughs) And they still get their pensions most of the time, unless you live in a state that um, takes it away when you commit a felony, which I think we might be one of them, but there's like maybe five. The rest of them get their pensions, and their pensions are like a million dollars, you guys. So, yeah. Pretty fucked. They're super overpaid. (laughs) Stupid bastards. Yeah, which brings us to our next point about how cops lie. Mm-hmm. I okay, just, <laughs> I just love that side because it's just like cops lie. <laughs> Facts. 
Do I hear? <laughs> okay, um, cops lie. In the unlikely event of a raid or the much more likely scenario of being targeted leaving work, be prepared to deal with the police, jail, and courts. <laughs> just reading the thing we do get followed after work that's something to like mention yeah we get targeted when they know we're like drunk and leaving work and you know they know what they're doing they pay attention to us i definitely drive like extra 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 like carefully for the first like three four five miles after leaving the club mm-hmm. especially late at night and i'm not even doing anything wrong but i feel like they're just gonna start shit with me so i drive like five under that's the only time i ever drive under the speed limit oh my god yeah i'm always scared i only live like five minutes away though but still i always like tell i'm always like drive perfect drive perfect <laughs> <laughs> but then there's like there's like other girls that are like drive me home and they're like super scared <laughs> like banging their music and shit i'm like this ain't this ain't gonna go well for too long <laughs> But okay, what is stand? Oh yeah, okay. So stand. This comes from the Legal Rights Center for Criminal Defense, and I like their little acronym stand. So stay aware. Tell them you're using your right to an attorney or to remain silent. Ask if you're free to leave. Never consent to a search, and do what it takes to get home safely. Oh, I love that. Yeah, I like that, and I especially like that as like the sort of ground for how you make all your choices. Because there's yeah. like what's legal and what's right and what your rights are. And then, like, cops are psychotic and they could kill you. Cops so. are liars. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, like, this this piece goes back to the raid or any in situation, really. But, like, the rule is nobody talks, everybody walks. I don't know. There was, like, a... There's this, like, recent news story about a uh, gambling, an underground gambling thing that got raided very recently. And it was... A- oh, like around here? No, no, no. Oh. It was, like, in California. And it was, like, a community of Asian people. It was, like, mostly older people. And e- nobody knew anything. All of a sudden, everyone was super confused. And they played into, like, the being, like, old. Yeah. Like, I don't even know where I am. Yeah. It was very funny. And nobody got arrested. Hell yeah. I don't fucking know what's going on, dude. And I actually have dementia. <laughs> I know. I was like, this <laughs> Solidarity was like on the next level, and I loved it. They interviewed a neighbor too, and they were like, "Did you know there was this like gambling ring going on next door to you?" And he was like, "There was a a what? Oh, what? <laughs> huh? <laughs> what is gambling? <laughs> Never heard of her. What is even that? <laughs> um, yeah, but like, and then when Lil, and then when Lil Wayne was like, did his uh his thing? That was a great fucking video." His deposition. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I liked how how you said um he never changed his demeanor. And that was like a huge thing too. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, he did a really good uh baseline. So he kept the same demeanor throughout all of his questioning. So if he was lying, if he was he was being very silly. Uh some like a clip of that deposition made it into one of his songs too. Oh really? Yeah, that part when he was like, I don't know, but I did play this one bad bitch's birthday party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> crazy, stupid thing. God, <laughs> he's so dumb. <laughs> it's so funny, but it was like it is like it's a faster class in being like evasive with your answers. Yeah. It's- and then he like literally threatens a guy, but like basically doesn't. I was talking to myself. I was talking to myself. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. He can't save you. Yeah, yeah. He's like, he can't in the real save world, you. he can't save you. Yeah. You know, he can't save you, right? Is that a threat, sir? I was talking to myself. <laughs> Okay. Oh but gosh. these are things like, and it's like, you know, we're so we're doing this like teaching people that, right? It's like, yeah, these are things I'm going to make you all do it, you know, but you should actually like practice saying this stuff because with cops, you just have to like reassert your rights over and over. And over. They're going to test, they're going to push, they're gonna push every... you and make you feel like you have to when you don't. Absolutely. That's and... why it's like so important. Or, like, make you feel safe or make you feel like they understand or they're on your side. and like, They're not on your side. <laughs> they are against you. And literally, anything you say, they can use against you. Some like And, like, they, like you said before, like, they're not educated. So it's At not all. like their case against you has to make sense. Or oh, can't <laughs> save you. <laughs> they cannot save you. Logic cannot save you. But, yeah, so great things to say to cops are... Uh, I have the right to remain silent. Okay. Oh, I have the right to remain silent. Are we repeating this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got to do the practice. I love it. I love and it. And then when they ask you some more bullshit later, I am reinstating my right to remain silent. 
I am the real right? 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 I want a lawyer. I want a lawyer. I will not talk till my lawyer is present. I will not talk. What if you don't have a lawyer? It doesn't matter. You just say it. You just fucking say it. Act fucking fancy. You have a lawyer, and he's one of the best ones. He's the best in the fucking United States. That's a good point. My lawyer. It's a good point, yeah. though, if you can't... Oh, what did you say? So I'm going to call Alex, and he's going to get me my lawyer. <laughs> Let's just get through this so I can get to the phone call faster. I'll have one. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Right. I need my phone oh. call. That's another one. <laughs> <laughs> because is there is there someone that, like, who... Who can you call anyways to like get yourself a lawyer if you don't want a public defender? Is there an, or any organizations that like help people get? Yeah, that that legal rights center, the one that put out the stand. They- oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stand. The yeah. Legal Rights Center for Criminal Defense and Expungement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get that shit expunged. They can give you advice. They can get a lawyer for you for your trial. And they can get your shit expunged if you do end up getting charged. And like, remember, these are like really petty charges. Like you were saying, like they really try to intimidate you. Yeah. They try to stack up a bunch of charges and make it sound really bad. But these overall, these are misdemeanors. These are even in the eyes of the law, not that big of a deal. Yeah. So nobody cares. Yeah. Nobody fucking cares that you. But they're trying to ruin your fucking life still. (laughs) Bastards. Totally. Um, Yeah. And then this last part, like document as much as you can safely. I think like, you know, we all are pretty aware like always film the cops you have the right to film the cops um and then yeah always keeping in mind that do what it takes to be safe you know like don't interfere and don't escalate violence don't put anyone in danger right by observing the cops but observe those motherfuckers um oh that's a good oh maybe did i go too far lawyers sometimes give bad advice and public defenders work for the city so their deals usually suck Huh, that's <laughs> fucked up. So, <laughs> well, they really set you up for failure, don't they? They really do. Right? I don't know why anybody's like, I believe in the justice system. Where? Why? Where? <laughs> Which part? What the fuck are you talking about? Okay. It's always a rich white guy, so I got it. Of course yeah. you do, sir. That, that's a really good point, though. If you can't afford a good lawyer and you do end up with a public defender, yeah, they work for the city. and like, Which makes me think then they're against you. Yeah. They're not, like, really with you. Systematically. Not with me. Systematically, they are. And, like, you pleading guilty or paying fines or doing anything, like, is a, a, like, that is a benefit to the city. So they're kind of on that side anyway. And, like, they're, like, you might every once in a while run into a really cool public defender who's actually, like, a really smart, like, really down person. But it's definitely not the norm. And it's definitely not what you should expect. (sighs) That's unfortunate. I put it in here, too. Like, always run stuff past your fellow misdemeanor girls because no one actually knows the law like criminals. (laughs) Oh, right. Yeah. (laughs) Like, we could give you, like, full rundown details. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. You need to, like, solidarity. (laughs) I just fucking have... I have yet to go to jail. Bitch, you knock on wood. wood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you do go to jail, call Minnesota Freedom Fund. Depending upon what you, your bail is, maybe they can let you out. Minnesota Freedom Fund? Yep. Hell yeah. Pay um, some that? people's bails. Oh, shit. That's right here. It says uh, jail, personal safety plans. Have a security team who will proactively support you. Uh, and SWAP, Sex Workers Outreach Project, will bail you out through, what is it called? Minnesota Min- Freedom Fund. Minnesota Freedom Fund. Oh, hell yeah. Okay. Yeah, they know about us. And uh, they probably don't like y'all, but. No, they love us. Oh, okay. yeah. we're It's an abolition organization, so we're trying to t- tear down jails and prisons. Oh, and- uh, yeah. Yeah. Do Good. I, do you want to say more about it? Um, no, I'm not here on behalf of no, them. No, no, so no, just way, what they but, are. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're definitely, they're an um, uh, abolition organization that um, is looking to um, get rid of uh, end cash bail. So looking at it like nobody really needs to be um, held and detained before they are actually convicted. Um, so what's the, jails don't keep us safe. Prisons don't necessarily keep us safe either. Mm-hmm. Um, and any of those resources that people get to what they think is rehabilitation, they offer that on the outs as well. And so people don't need to be in jail to get those options. Um, but really looking to end jail and prisons and um, uh, especially cash bail. Because yeah. right now that is something that hinders uh, black and poor communities. Um, right. It's like hella racism color. classes, right? Yep. Fucked up. Oh, absolutely. If you're rich, you can get out. <laughs> Fuck off. Um, that's amazing. Um, 
Yeah, Minnesota Freedom Fund's great. They it takes a couple of days, but they'll bail you. We'll bail you out yes. and advocate <laughs> for yourself aggressively as fuck, if necessary. Um, if you need medical care, then they won't send you to jail. No, uh, <laughs> I said. So say say that, you're still going to jail. <laughs> well, no, I hope. So. I have one loophole to offer. If they do really fuck you up and you get really hurt, if you like insist, and like this is also like an extremely like white privileged experience, but if you insist on them like taking you to the hospital. Mm. Sometimes you can just leave the hospital then. <laughs> just so I can see people cuff to their beds. Oh, I, I have too. I said sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the white privilege part. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. I was like, no, this is like. If you're like- black, this does not apply. <laughs> okay. no, no, no. There's a cop outside your room. <laughs> I assure you. That's fucked up. Um, okay. uh, but but they do have like uh, they do have legal obligations in jail to provide you medical care and to yeah. provide you your medications. They often don't, right? Like, and there's a that's the other like super fucked up flip side. You know, people die in jail. Oh yeah, people I'm, die in prison. I'm sure I would fucking die. They'd be like insulin. Yeah, right. Oh God, I can't. Here's even, a piece of bread. Bitch. I can't even <laughs> imagine. Be- oh my God. No, it's fucked up. No, it's real fucked up. Yeah. Yeah, which brings us to the conclusion. Jail sucks. Yeah. <laughs> Every step of the carceral process is intentionally dehumanizing. And remember that you're a good and worthy person that has been unfairly targeted. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you don't deserve to be treated like that. No, you literally just went to work. Right. You're great. <laughs> yeah, you, you literally just went to work. For <laughs> And some of these people prosecuting you have participated what a fucking lot of assholes. Them. A lot of them. Do you guys remember, like, uh, a few years back, I can't remember what porn site it was, but they put out all that, like, money for people to, like, snitch on their high-profile, um, like, oh my Republican God, no. clients. Oh, like oh really? Yeah. 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 Oh, did they snitch? Oh, I love Nothing that. Nothing too amazing came from it, unfortunately. It. I was really hopeful that we were going to get some, like, juicy shit out of it. But. It's all of them, though, just so everybody knows. It's Every all- single fucking politician Spoiler. on the goddamn it's- planet of the Earth. I think just now it's hitting me how many politicians have, like, hired sex workers. Because like, mm-hmm. uh, Elon Musk... I think you shared that he's been seen on multiple uh, escort apps or something like that recently or sometime wow. in the last few years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or he better be paying top fucking dollar. <laughs> he's going to have to. I want her to come out. My with hour story. just moved up. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's all of them. All of them. You can't convince me otherwise. No. Would you ever see an off-duty cop? Not if I knew. I saw, I'm sure I probably have. I saw that on Twitter. I'm sure I have. I haven't before, but I've given it. I've done VIP with a, with like an off duty cop before, and he was like, t- like he was just like a, a man. <laughs> I for sure done a VIP with a uh, undercover cop. I always talk. I talk a lot of shit to them. Though. Yeah, they're so obvious. I mean, they give themselves away really easily. <laughs> really, <laughs> well, that yeah fucking assholes um okay well that's all for the slideshow right or what are we on now that's pretty much it like we were at the last slide i think the only thing that we didn't cover was the like condoms as evidence thing oh yeah yeah they and I, I feel like i feel like a lot of i feel like we all know this but yeah condoms on you can definitely be used against you yeah and in the state of minnesota one condom on your person can be used as evidence against you in court for prostitution that is so like what yeah and then gone to get dick after work before yeah and then on the flip side they also want to say that like sex workers are like dirty and have like all these stds but then they will like prosecute you or like use it against you if you have like safety on you so that's just like um, I don't know. It's something like ironic. We, we decided up. a long yeah. time ago that like condoms are like the best, one of the best things for like public health. Of, like, yeah. Stopping. Yeah. The spread of diseases. And like Minneapolis is currently an epicenter of like HIV and syphilis transition. Uh, That's fucking terrifying. It is. It's, uh, it's really bad here right now. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, be careful. And um, you know, get safe using supplies and use condoms. And it just, it's just, yeah. If we're, if like the public health thing is allegedly like what is so important and so pertinent, mm-hmm. like criminalizing a really basic safety thing, it seems 
ludicrous. Yeah. Um, and they do free testing, by the way, at the Red Door Clinic. Um, they, if the, all they would, all they ask is like a donation if you have one of like whatever amount. So, and Red Door does walk in. Hell yeah. Do it whenever. And SWAP has HIV tests too, and I am certified to do HIV testing. Okay. Hell so yeah. If you're ever super scared, hit me up and we can make sure you don't have a big bad. I just went and got <laughs> tested yesterday. Hey, congratulations. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know what I was going to say. I, I had a question. Oh, oh go ahead. sorry. Isn't there Narcan? I saw some Narcan training thing going on next week. I wonder if it's outside. Yeah. Probably. Okay. Yeah, learn. Yeah. Learn what were you going to say, though? Because I don't even know where it's at, so never it's mind. at East Phillips Park. I was actually looking at that. Oh, okay, East Phillips Park. What time? That's awesome. Uh, 5.30 p.m., I believe. On what day? Tuesday. Oh, okay. Tuesday, Narcan training. East Phillips Park, 5.30 p.m. Can save lives. Be there, be square. <laughs> um, okay, then what were you going to say? Oh, I was going to ask... Yeah, because we talked about this like a couple weeks ago, all the know your right stuff, and, and it was especially BB, but there was sort of this sentiment when we were done of like, oh shit, I've been doing some stuff wrong. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, I guess I want to hear for y'all, like, what did you feel was like, yeah, like what was like really new information or interesting to you? Okay, so I want to use a time that I actually did do things right, and then things that Times I did things wrong. Okay, so <laughs> I got hit with a weed charge over in Wisconsin, and my whole thing was uh, somebody called the cops on me and a friend because they saw a rolling tray in my lap. So and, stupid. Yeah. Mind your own business, yeah. you weirdo. Weird. And <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the cops got oh, called on us. They pulled us over, and uh, basically... My friend didn't have a green card yet, and it was his weed. Wow. And I didn't want him to get in trouble because I didn't know what happens from there. So I was just like, right. he was like, let's not say that there's any more weed in the car, but I didn't want it to, like, escalate. So I was like, I'll just claim the weed. I'll be honest. It's my weed, yada, yada, yada. So then I flat out just told the cop that there was weed because I didn't want my friend to get in trouble. And, yeah, so that's my only charge that I have, which is a misdemeanor over Wisconsin. And he wanted me to feel really bad about it. That was, like, the craziest part. He's like, you will have this charge. And, like, it's weed. We'll be fine. I'll be all right. <laughs> yeah. And then I guess the other time that I did things the right way, but I didn't even know what was going on. Somebody else just told me I got into a fight at work because another girl threatened me. And then she threatened to call the cops on me. And then everybody at the club was like, we didn't see anything. Nothing happened. And everybody had my back. And now I'm like... Oh, well, good. Yeah, and then she tried to get be beat up some other girl down the street. It was crazy. What the fuck? Yeah. She was on one. <laughs> she, she was on one. The For cop, sure. <laughs> the cops just, like... I, I think they ordered her a taxi and sent her home. <laughs> Of it's funny how sometimes small town stuff can get like so wild and then sometimes they'll just be like oh that's just Greg yeah because it was in a super small town yeah oh yeah, yeah the small towns in Wisconsin too like the cops are just like drinking at the bar I'm like are you driving home yes you should be careful in the sheriff's car okay <laughs> they ordered worry. a taxi or she ordered a taxi I think they I don't know what happened. All I know mm -hmm. is that... wonder what kind of taxi it was. <laughs> <laughs> Did she ever get in the taxi? Yay. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know. All right. We got to get the fuck out of here. Because why is it already 8 p.m.? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay. Well, <laughs> oh, wait, we got to mention Dits. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So we do have some events coming up, you guys. Hello, sex workers and allies. What up? So June 2nd is the International Whores Day, right? That's right. Okay. Hell, yeah. And then so Dits, Dancing in the Streets. We d we've we done it the past two years. And I know some of you have hit me up uh, later that day saying you didn't know about it or blah, blah, blah. So plan on it this time. Now you know. Yeah. <laughs> June second, be there, and it's actually it's so much fun. Um, we dress up. There's a theme. Um, there's drinks. There's 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 music. There's funness. There's water guns. There's, there's vibes, and then we like end up at a park, and then there's like more vibes and stuff. And then you can free the nipple at the park. Mm -hmm. It's always fun. <laughs> I wanted to say something about that. Is it? Like, is that the only place where we're allowed yeah, to have nipples out? Like, I that feels so. so weird. No, it's Minneapolis. All of Minneapolis? Yeah, because okay. there's this one girl who just rides her bike topless. 
Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She was I feel like we've all seen her, right? Out. If you yeah, live in Minneapolis, yeah. you know the girl who rides her bike down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or the person, you know, that person with titties rides around with their bike. And um, we see them every summer. Yeah, we love it. So shout out to you. An inspiration. Because yeah. fucking, um, yeah, no, I can't do it. You know why, though? That's just because I have, like, I'm just like, no, because all these people need to pay me. That's exactly <laughs> my mentality. You know? <laughs> You're not. But for everybody else, though, you shouldn't You shouldn't be, like, you should be able to, like, take your shirt off if you want. Absolutely. For the fucking nipple. But yeah, kind of a celebrate sex workers' rights. Um, it's one of the most, one of the, like, most explicitly sex workers' rights demonstrations that yeah. exist, which I love. Mm-hmm. It's a great time. Yeah. Because last year there was, like, a food truck, that, and we, like... We, like, chilled and, like, smoked in the park. And there was also a wedding right next door. They were kind of mad, but they're not going to be there soon. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, can all these fucking whores, like, get out of our way, please? <laughs> not embrace their blessing. Dude, I would have been so happy. I would have been like, you guys can, like, do you guys, like, want to come, like, to, to the wedding? <laughs> You're not happy. They are um, not happy. No, uh, the theme this year? Yes. Is- um extraterrestrial oh my god yes <laughs> triple extraterrestrials right sexy fuck yeah aliens. yeah so sexy whore aliens fuck yeah let's do it we, um and we then from the stripper zone in downtown minneapolis over to the old horse town yeah and we have like uh what's it called when people like drive in front of you and shit we have like escorts and stuff we do we have uh, the, of the, the beat up escorts you know <laughs> Like the buff guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're... Our escorts are the um, bikers, like the bikers uh, for racial justice. So oh, yeah. I remember yeah. talking to them and I was like, oh my gosh, that's, <laughs> that's so cute. Yeah, they're I cool. like that. Um, okay. And then this weekend, it's like uh, Trashy Whores. This weekend's Trashy Whores. So funny for like yeah. Earth Day and shit. Trashy Hoes. Trashy Hoes. At so, PV Park. At what, what park? At PV Park. PV Park. Trashy Hoes. Over if, South on Franklin. You, over South on Franklin. If you want to go pick up some trash, it's which, where which you are. should. <laughs> and it's where the hose at. I can't believe I didn't think about this before. We're going to shake ass and pick up trash. <laughs> <laughs> Bars. <laughs> That's so funny. Okay, you guys, we got to go because I got to go to work. I need to eat food. Um, Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Share the show and go on my OnlyFans and subscribe to that. And come to Dits and come to Trashy Hoes. And yeah, yeah, we just wanted to share this so we could like educate people on their rights because I just know a lot of a lot of people just don't know a lot of things. And I just maybe you would be able to better advocate for yourself if you just kind of knew a little bit about what was going on. So, yeah, we just wanted to shed a little light. So, bye. NBC. No relation to NBC.